Hi, Red Bank residents. Happy holidays and welcome officially to winter this week. Pick the perfect STEM activity for us to do, thinking that this is the winter season and the temperatures are now going back down again. We had our first significant snowfall of the season. And this book celebrates something you wear to keep warm. Earmuffs for Everyone by Megan McCarthy. If you remember a while ago in our summer STEM sessions, we read a book by Megan McCarthy all about the invention of bubble gum. Here she comes back after doing a bunch of research about the person that's known for inventing the earmuffs. And actually, a Greenwood, Chester Greenwood, isn't the first one to come up with the idea of earmuffs, but he is the one who improved the design and got a patent for it and is best known for the earmuffs today. And certain days are celebrated across the world as national days or international days. This one may not have made it that far, but the state of Maine, where Chester Greenwood is from, has celebrated for the past couple decades, Chester Greenwood Day for his earmuff invention on December 21st. So that was just this past Monday. And you'll see in the picture book how they celebrate. Earmuffs for everyone, how Chester Greenwood became known as the inventor of earmuffs. And after the story, we're gonna take a look at a website where he tells you how you can do a DIY earmuff project, actually doing it yourself out of some recycled materials. Enjoy. The word muff has been around since the Middle Ages. Starting in the 1700s, people wore muffs on their hands to keep them warm, like this. In the 1800s, hand muffs looked like this. When I was a little girl back in kindergarten, I had a muff that looked like this. Imagine putting it on. It looks like a gigantic Q-tip or a pom-pom. Now, there are a couple of things you can't do when wearing a muff. It would be impossible to drive a car. And back then, of course, they didn't have to worry about things like texting because that would be impossible to do with a muff on as well. Let's find out more about the earmuffs. In 1858, William Ware invented one of the first kind of earmuffs called ear, cheek, and chin muffs and other designs followed. We'll take a look at some of these. So originally they were gonna be worn underneath the chin up toward the ears and not like today's are with the headband over top of your head like headphones. So there were a bunch of different inventions and a bunch of different people working on ideas at the same time. Another inventor named Isaac Gleinart placed ads in major newspapers to promote his ear protectors. Back then, the only way to get word out about your product was through newspaper ads. There was no social media. There was no internet. There wasn't even any TV for commercials. So you had to rely on the newspaper to get the word out. Now, Gleinart made other inventions too, mostly things out of rubber including rubber waterproof baby pants. And then if you look here, I know deodorant must have been invented ages and ages ago where people use certain plants or chemicals to control body odor, but he used these little pads underneath the armpits to absorb a sweat. Ew, all sorts of crazy inventions. Believe it or not, his company exists today you can still buy a pair of sweat protectors. So that is Klein Arts. I'll have to look it up online later. But the guy everyone knows as the inventor of the earmuffs is Chester Greenwood. And this is a nonfiction book, even though it has drawings in it, it looks like it was done with um, color pencil. It is actually research and based almost 100% on nonfiction true facts. Some of the details were from very, very long ago, and the author does mention that there's one part where they may have taken a little liberty and may have exaggerated the story a little bit because the details aren't remembered exactly to this day. But it was believed that Chester, when he was a little boy, had very big ears and they often got cold, so he needed some earmuffs to keep them warm. So this is how it happened. As the story goes, he had gigantic ears and they were sensitive to the cold. 
He didn't like to wrap his head in scratchy scarves. So he asked his granny and went home to her and asked her to fashion some ear covers out of wire and cloth. And kaboom, earmuffs were born. Obviously, the story isn't quite true since earmuffs had already been born years earlier, four months before Chester Greenwood was actually. And there's another story that says Chester didn't like the woolen earmuffs that most kids wore, so he fashioned something else. And he's really known for the wires to hold the earmuffs tight to the head so there's no gaps and they don't fall off. What do you think really happened? What we do know for sure is that after testing various versions of his earmuffs, when Chester was just 19, he got one of these from the US government. This is a patent. And if you or your family watch the show Shark Tank, you'll know they often ask about patents. That's something from the government that issues you special permission and rights to a sole invention, a way of designing something or a certain material to be used that nobody else can steal your idea for quite a while and make money off of it. It's solely in your discretion. So that's what happened here. He got a patent from the Washington DC patent office saying that his design was his and nobody else could steal it. Now, there are lots of other products that we use every day that have also gone through the patent process. These are not by Chester Greenwood, but by other people and items that you may have known. Coca-Cola, Scotch tape, Band-Aids. And there's a whole nother story about the invention of the Band-Aids. Maybe I'll read that to you one day too. Apple computers, Lego blocks, and space capsule. So a few of the things that we know. Before Chester earmuffs came along, earmuffs didn't fit snugly to the ears. Chester came up with a tight steel band that held those mufflers in place. That is what Chester did for earmuffs. He made people's ears even warmer. It's just like the story of Thomas Edison and the light bulb. That is perfect because there is a place in New Jersey called Edison, New Jersey, home to a museum for Thomas Edison. So Thomas Edison is known for things like the phonograph, which is like an old form of a record player, and working on the light bulb. But it turns out he wasn't the first inventor of the light bulb. He just worked to improve the light bulb and make it last longer. And today, he is the one that has the most fame for the creation of the light bulb. Although I'm going to mention to you some other people that worked on it even earlier than him. Here we go. These inventions came before Edison's. But before Edison, light bulbs didn't stay lit for long. One of Edison's early light bulbs lasted for 40 hours. So that's almost two whole days. That was a big improvement. Edison didn't invent the light bulb. He made it better. That is what Chester did for the earmuff. So there's Joseph Swan's light bulb, which is patented in 1878, but only gave 13 and a half hours of light. So it's only about half a day. So that didn't last that long. And Henry Woodward and Matthew Evans light bulbs were patented even a couple years earlier in 1875. But let's go back to the story of Chester Greenwood. It is said that when Chester was a boy, he was already thinking about how he could earn money. He went door to door selling eggs he got from his family's chickens. With the profits from the eggs, he brought candy. Most kids would have eaten the candy, but not Chester. He sold it. Even as a boy, he was practicing good business skills. So I'm wondering how many of you have ever had some kind of job or did a chore or came up with a creative idea of a way to earn money. Maybe you had a lemonade stand. Maybe you made an arts and craft and sold it. Maybe you just do a lot of yard work and make money that way. All those are good business skills, just like Chester Green would have. It was those good business skills that helped the young Chester sell his ear protectors as far off as Canada. Soon he earned enough money to buy a wonderful home for his family. It sat high on a hill overlooking the town and the river. And it was said that he had the first team car in town. Chester also had a workshop in town. On the top floor was his earmuff factory and below was a bicycle shop. 
So you can see, listen to all sorts of different kinds of inventions and technologies. Chester didn't just invent earmuffs. He worked on other items as well. Here are a few of his improvements. He worked on a tea kettle that had a round bottom so it didn't wear out as fast. He worked on a replaceable rake edge so you didn't have to buy a whole new rake when one of the bristles broke. He had a certain bag to carry and protect umbrellas. And this was a poppable pop-up house. Wouldn't you like to take that camping with you? While Chester was busy with his business, his wife Isabel was busy with her own affairs. She had joined the main chapter of the women's suffrage movement. The suffrage movement was a women's rights movement to help them get the right to vote. Women were not able to vote in the late 1800s and Isabel held meetings at their house on the hill. Perhaps that is why Chester employed so many women at his factory. So important. In 1937, Chester Greenwood passed away. Soon after his death, his factory closed for good, but Chester would not be forgotten. What's interesting is that in 1939, people seem to remember Chester and forget about all the other earmuff inventors. An article in Life Magazine read, beauty and fashion come to the lowly earmuff Earmuffs were invented 64 years ago by the late Chester Greenwood of Farmington Falls, Maine. He had sensitive ears. For nearly 60 years, he was a sole purveyor of earmuffs to postmen, policemen, farmers, and country boys. He had only one style, like the Model T Ford, black, utilitarian, unlovely. The market was almost exclusively male. Then four years ago, skiers and college girls made them fashionable. So now you can see they have earmuffs, all sorts of designs. I saw a kid with earmuffs that looked like unicorns the other day. So they do come in all sorts of different shapes, colors, fabrics, and designs today. But they only remember Chester. To them, he was the inventor of the earmuffs. Many people wanted his legacy to live on. So in the 1970s, a man named Mickey McGuire, who worked at a newsstand, thought there should be a Chester Greenwood day. To drum up his excitement, Mickey made up some stories. He said that Chester woke up at 4 a.m. and ran a mile to the factory to light the boilers. Well, we knew he led, led a good life and lived on that beautiful house on the hill. So I don't think that part was true. He said, I couldn't remember what was true and what was not. I still can't. I'm afraid that I told some terrible, wicked yarns. So you can't believe everything you hear. Chester Greenwood Day went all the way to Maine legislature. The congressmen argued back and forth. Some wanted the day. Some thought it was silly. One senator said, now we've roped the national media into giving us publicity. Another senator disagreed saying, I predict that every December 21st, Maine will be back in the news. And after much disagreement, Chester Greenwood Day was official in 1977 and they still celebrate each and every year. I'm not sure if they officially celebrate this year with COVID, but usually every year Chester Greenwood Day is celebrated in December. There are people on buses and cars all wearing earmuffs. Everyone has a good time. Chester celebrated each year is, as the inventor of the earmuffs. And you can see the bus even is wearing earmuffs. I'm surprised the pets aren't. Maybe that will come next. Wow, so December 21st, that was this past Monday, the first day of winter is celebrated as Chester Greenwood Day. And that's how the story goes. Chester may not have created the original earmuff, but he made it better. Sometimes that's what makes all the difference. And in the back of the book is a note about the research and all about patents and lots of information for um, kids who want some more knowledge and for adults to read. And down below on the next page, I'm going to show you right here is a picture, actual photograph from a camera of what Chester Greenwood actually looked like. I think underneath that hat, he's wearing a pair of his earmuffs. Perfect. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you can fashion your own pair of earmuffs. Here we go. We're going to share the screen. 
and go ahead to one of these. And go to this one right here. It's called Make Zine, which is an online like blog site, uh, e-magazine for people that want to do DIY projects. And of course, DIY stands for do it yourself. So this particular project is making earmuffs of recycled material. I do have to say, it's actually not something I would ever do because I do believe that the cost of making your own earmuffs is probably just as expensive or even a little more than just going to the store and buying some from Five Below or Target. But it's creative and a lot of fun. So you're welcome to give it a try. You can see from the picture that it does look like a regular headband that people would wear in their hair. And here they have what looks to be like a soccer ball, but it's definitely not a regular size soccer ball. It's one of the miniature balls, play balls that you would play with, or maybe the size you would use for a dog toy. So what they did is cut that ball in half using a sharp object, probably either a knife, sharp scissors, or a razor blade. So be sure if you're doing that, you get a grown up to help you so you don't accidentally get cut. And after that, they have to find something to stuff inside the holes for the earmuffs to keep your ears warm and comfy. So let's think, maybe we can use cotton balls, pom poms, maybe a piece of an old blanket. How about some polyfill? That's like the stuffing they use inside teddy bears. That might work as well too. So if you go down below, this will take you to a spot where it has some project steps to make the item. Cut the sports theme ball in half. So showing you how to do that. Then securing the headband by wrapping it around. Add stuffing, wrap the fabric, and then your warm sporty earmuffs should be ready to be worn. And there's an optional one to put headphones, a headphone wire in your earmuffs. A few years ago when iPods were real popular for people to listen to music, there were jackets with hoods that had wires attached to the inside so you could just plug in your iPod and listen as you were going skiing or walking out in the winter wonderland. So I hope you find this interesting and fun to do. And maybe I'll see you around town at Riverside Gardens or someplace else at Count Basie Park wearing fashionable earmuffs. I hope you enjoyed this little lesson and we'll see you soon. Don't forget to sign up and join our winter reading program that's going to be running from January and into the end of February at the Red Bank Public Library. Have a happy new year. See you soon. Bye-bye.